So in, in 2008, as we look ahead to this year and trying to you know, keep on raising the bar in terms of, of what the program elements are and, and the new business as usual, well, first thing is the guidebook. You heard reference to the guidebook. I'm looking at the back because I see Peter Law back there who's going to follow us. And uh, Peter Law was the chair of the steering committee that I developed stored planning a guidebook for British Columbia. And so here we are for six years later. The lessons that we've learned over the last six years, we're incorporating, incorporating those lessons learned in what we're calling Beyond the Guidebook. And it's more than just the guidebook. It's about livable communities and protecting stream health. Critical. And, and in terms of, uh, of the rollout, rather than going and presenting to people, what we're in the early stages of talking to right now with, with Couch and Valley and the and I will, and with, uh, and with <coughs> the Minis in the, in the Coax Valley, is a, is, a, is a pilot outreach where rather than attracting people to an event for a day like this, you know, tying them up for six hours, seven hours, having three two-hour segments spaced at two weeks and building that internal capacity because you really have to have the small group setting to present a bit of information, to have the conversation, to wrap your mind around it, to go away for a couple of weeks, think about it, digest it, come back and have the next part of the conversation and lead people through from the philosophy through the tools because part of rolling out beyond the guidebook is to roll out the new water balance model. We'll come to that in a moment. Uh, number two on that list up here, a catalog of green value practices. That's the, that was actually a direct outcome of the Green Infrastructure Leadership Forum last December. Having an idea of how we're going to identify and capture these actions on the ground in the various municipalities that are adding up to a positive settlement strategy. Last year, our main, our main effort went into working with local government. Just a question, how many people here are with local government? Quite a few, okay. So, presumably some, most of you heard about the showcasing series. So last year, big effort in terms of uh, working with local government. We would have liked to have brought, brought both the local government and the private sector, uh, both uh, with two tracks along at the same pace, but you can only do so much. This year, we want to put some more emphasis on, on actually bringing the development committee on, and so we have it in mind of, of having, uh, again, on a small workshop basis, green value workshops, part of that inform and educate with the, with the development committee. This year, in terms of the showcasing uh, innovation series, it'll be south of the Malahat. And uh, um, really, if you think back to that design with nature, uh, those six bullets, raising the bar again by putting the emphasis on the, on the first three bullets in terms of you know, the, uh, the transportation options, the uh, compact communities, and the uh, energy and, and water, water reductions. And then finally, part of the program this year is a, a regional climate change workshop. And where's Ben? I think you're going to be part of it, <laughs> right? <laughs> Almost done. So, you know, a big thing is, and I'm, I'm looking at Peter as I say this because, I mean, back in 2002 when we developed the guidebook, part of our philosophy was we had to get people thinking about the site in order to do better at the watershed scale because we recognize that in terms of local government, on a weekly basis, the decisions are being made on a site level basis because people aren't thinking about the big picture. So we had to achieve a basic transformation in 2002 to get people thinking about what we could in fact accomplish at the site level. Well, six years later, we're, we're now in a position where we can raise the bar again and sort of say, well, we want to link our actions at the site scale with what happens in the stream. And we've taken the water balance model. Anybody here in the room actually been on, on the line to, to actually try and go to waterbalance.ca? A few, okay. Well, we're integrating it with another engineering tool and this, you know, the tool is the means to the end. So we thought it's not about the tool, it's about bringing the people together. Because by linking a water balance model with a qual hypo tool, we believe it's the way to bring the planners and the engineers together, truly in the sense of working on the same problem and talking about what we do on the land, what it does to the stream at the planning stage, not after you've degraded it. So it's, Quite excited about this Friday is, uh, is a water balance model partners forum uh, being proposed by the Bishop of North Vancouver. That's the beginning of the rollout of the new tool, and then, then and we'll pilot it out on Vancouver Island. So, in conclusion, I too am going to leave you with a quote from one of our colleagues on the on the Water Sustainability Committee, Peter Anzans, who's the uh, manager of Community Sustainability in, in um, uh, City of Abbotsford. And uh, Peter's the one who's always used that anthropogenic word with us, right? I never understood what that word meant, but I do believe it's people-centric. But uh, again, it's a reminder, because here I just
just talked about a tool, but it's not the tool, it's the people. And at the end of the day, it's all about changing behavior. And I'm an engineer saying that. That's it, I'm on time. <laughs>